Pastor Hank is so creative with his writing. Um, but also, one last announcement, too. Uh, Pastor Chelsea, it's her birthday today, so everybody go and say happy birthday to her. Amen. We love you, Pastor Chelsea. But um, that is all the announcements for tonight. So we just absolutely want to look right to you guys right now and declare that the anointing is coming wherever you're watching, whether you're driving, sitting at home, wherever you're at, wherever you are in the United States, other countries. We declare that open hearts to you tonight, open ears to receive what the Lord has for you tonight. And we say peace to your home and prayers answered in the name of Jesus. And with that, let's welcome Pastor Hank and Brenda Kuhneman. All right. We love you, son. Glory to God. All right. Love you, buddy. Go, welcome, man. welcome, everybody on the telephone. How are you by the telephone? Come on, you can talk back on the telephone. You could say, doing good. Shout <laughs> it if you're on the phone. Yeah. I kind of can hear you. Shout, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're in the room, how's everybody? <laughs> and I heard that we had a family drive in from New Hampshire. Where are they at? Bless Whoa, your heart, welcome. New Hampshire. Wow. What do you think of Omaha so far? All right. Well, well come and visit more. Oh, that's awesome. That's but awesome. But anyway, welcome. We're so glad welcome that you came. Welcome to the studio. And I'm also, I guess everybody. this is my camera here. And I want to say hello to those of you that are watching by all the social media venues. Uh, again, if one of them goes down, you can go to, tell us again. LOAchurch.org forward slash watch. You okay. can always watch on the website. I feel like I need to so the website should stay with bit. us. Throughout the duration, anything else goes down. And but if you want to yeah. watch on Facebook, so I know we got a lot of people on Facebook. All right, let's give uh, some shout outs. Online. Some online. We want to give every. Here's the thing. We just like to give a few minutes to let everybody come on in the room. And uh, all connect. right, I'm going to start with Cynthia. Hello, Cynthia. Come on, everybody. They're joining on. Sarah, we love you too. And Kathy is watching, and she's got a picture. Looks like a picture of your cat. Is that right? <laughs> okay. okay, come on, German Shepherd lovers. <laughs> and then we also have Arita, and you're doing great. Hey, good. I like to hear that. I see Samantha from Jackson. Yeah, tell us where you're watching from. Yeah, oh, come on, what state. Brooklyn, New York. Natalie, hey, yeah. hi, Natalie. Uh, Brenda, your your dad was Donnie. from Brooklyn, wasn't he, or something like yes, that? Yes, he did. New he York lived there like when that. he was growing up. Uh, we have Donnie from Aloha from Honolulu. Uh, give a shout out for and Honolulu. And Phyllis, hello Phyllis. I just saw blessings back to you. Mary and, hey, from Paul's Northern watching. Georgia. Hey, yeah. uh, I don't know who's here from New Hampshire. Uh, Paul, they're just they're they're a great looking family, and they like <laughs> Omaha, I think, better than New Hampshire. Paul, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> and That's Susan great. from San Diego. Hey. San Diego, you know what, Susan? San Diego has this place, um, Coronado. Oh, Coronado. 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 Thanks, Eddie. Eddie said Coronado, but that's a beautiful place. And then, Ashley, you attended church at LOH on Sunday. Incredible. Mess. Thank you, Ashley, for your encouragement. I hope you can come back again. So, yeah. all right, come on, people. You're still coming on. Hey, Travis, nice to have you. I like to see a man in there. Good. Christina from Idaho. I've never been to Idaho. My sister was born in she Idaho. She was born in Idaho, really? Mountain wow. Home Air Force Base. Ginger, we declare your granddaughter uh, waiting for a kidney transplant. We declare that yes. that is going to come, come into line. Father, in the, name in the name of, of Jesus. We just declare in Jesus' name that that occurs quickly yes. and a divine healing in her body right yeah, now yeah. in Jesus' yeah. name. In hey, Jesus name. Sandy is in Des Moines and has two German shepherds. Sandy? I believe this is a word from Hank, not the Lord. You should get a third one, German Chef Third. I like having three, but boy, do I vacuum every single day. Because, see, now here's the thing. So, Sandy, we are very immaculate uh, housekeepers. We Brenda. try. Because I want you to think we're hoarders. We're not. No, we're not even close to that. Um, we are very immaculate. And Brenda trained me well. Now, before I got married 32 years ago, that was a different story. But but anyway, we but that's are. That's B B C before Brenda came. Yeah, before Brenda came. <laughs> All right, let's give a couple more shout outs. Come on, Brenda, let me hear you give some shout outs. Okay, let's Rodney see. Rodney from Central California. Hey, buddy, good Kathleen, to have you. Kathleen, I see we have Michael from Pennsylvania. God bless you. Uh, Carrie, I think from Michigan. Carla from Michigan. I read that wrong. Oh, okay. As well as. Uh, Delena from. We love you oh, too, Mary. Up quickly, yeah. She just put love you. We love God you. God bless you guys. Okay. All right. 
Are we willing, oh, guys, you bet. Keep Lord Rudy Giuliani in your prayers. Father, we just declare yes. whatever that is with Rudy Giuliani. I don't know what's going on. I don't watch the news, but whatever that is. Yes. Does anybody know what's going on? They raided his office. We command that to be exposed. In the name and we of declare Jesus. that in the name of Yeshua. Yes. That is exposed and stopped. And Father, we say any person that is standing up for truth, yes. for righteousness, for justice, and for the yes. exposure that you are bringing upon this nation. We declare the host be with them. And Father, we say Father stop Basola. these people who have yes. absolute agendas yes. and expose them. And yes, bring them Lord. to justice. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In name All right, well, I'm going to take this last one. So Lori, she's asking, how did Pastor Hank like his spa treatment? Okay, Lori. So I got to tell you this. For those of you that are here in the room and those of you that are watching. You have to go back to understand. Okay, and those of you on the phone, listen very carefully. Yesterday, Brenda, well, Monday and Tuesday, my queen was absolutely spoiled. Yes. Spoiled. And I had two motives. A, I love her. And B, my birthday's coming in two weeks, so you know you reap what you sow. <laughs> so anyway, and so uh, so it, no, honey, I did it out, totally out of love. God knows it's still out of love. And so we went and we planted flowers. We like to plant flowers every year. I, I know I'm a guy, but I like flowers. I think Jesus likes flowers because he made them, you know. But I, I do like flowers. I really do. Brent, I really like flowers. And, I, and one of the things we like to do is we always like to, you know, plant flowers. And so to answer your question about the spa treatment, no, I have not, for there's still two reasons going on. I'm wrestling with it on the inside. You know, do, do, does a dude really put his foot up for somebody to touch, touch his toes except his <laughs> wife? I'm not sure. But my wife is there, so it probably will be okay. Maybe you saw the show of hand Sunday. How many women yeah. that you see guys in that nail salon every time know. you go? I'm telling Matthew, you it's the truth. will you go with me? No, no he won't. <laughs> I'll let you know, son, how it is. Now, he's 28. He, he, he's, he can figure that out. But here's the point. The point is I am going to... I asked gonna, Jonathan if he would. That one over like a balloon. I am going. I went, for the sake of time, I am going because I want to honor her and I love her. And also, I want to try it out. And we so, had to get past the flowers. But she's flower making me planting. wait until after I plant the flowers. So she said, dirt underneath the nails. You don't want to get, anyway, you that's. Don't ruin all your guys repair. don't think that. Well, listen, we work on cars and we like the grease, okay? You know, but, but clean nails are important, right, men? Yeah, there's two amens. <laughs> we only got two amens in the whole audience. If you heard that on the phone, let me hear you say amen, man. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started here tonight. And uh, is there anything else, uh, baby, good. that you want to talk I'm about? Good. I do want to remind all the women. Yeah. As soon as we get it live, sign up for the ladies' luncheon and tea. Yeah. And a lot of times we've done these on site, but because the building's in construction, we can't do it. Yeah. We're going to do it at a venue. Uh, but make sure you plan for that. Invite a friend. I think this is going to be a great opportunity yeah. to share the love of Jesus, maybe with people that wouldn't step foot in a church, but they would go to an event like this. And um, how many? And I, I, I didn't know if I saw a lot of show of hands. And Mylon and Christy, if you're listening, I'm doing a test right. Right now so anybody go back far enough to remember Mylon Lefevre and his music okay oh, yeah. He's so cool dude, some man. of us yeah so they're they're good friends and they're gonna yeah. be here and his wife Christy's gonna speak and it's gonna be fantastic it's gonna be fantastic and also I want to just say this too uh, I think it's uh, Kirsten from uh, South Africa man that's good I, I like having people from different nations that's awesome. but I want to just make this last announcement that we're gonna get into our content because we're gonna have Sunil come up and set up tonight's pulse in just a minute. But um, next week, be praying for us. Uh, we've got a pretty busy week. We're going to be doing a lot of different venues. Um, Tuesday night, I believe it's Flashpoint. We'll have to see what, how their schedule is and mine. And then Thursday, we'll be on for the first time with Amanda Grace. Um, and so that'll be really great. And then we'll be back. We haven't been on for a while with the Elijah streams, but we'll be on next Friday. And I really love Steve Schultz, Brenda. And uh, yeah. the reason I haven't been on, for those of you that maybe you watch Elijah's streams, it's just my schedule's just been crazy. You can only do so many things. And so whenever they would have an opening, it wouldn't work for me and vice versa. And if they did, you know, they say, hey, we'll open anything up. It just, you know, you can only do so much. And then you have to also kind of know what you feel like the Lord is saying to you. And so um, we're ready to roll, though. God's got some things that he wants to awesome. talk about. All right, without further ado... Um, Brenda, uh, I want to bring up Sunil. Sunil Isaac, are you here? Let's give a big hand clap for Sunil Isaac. And uh, he is such a blessing. You are sporting a cool looking blue, man. Thank you. You. Know, you know what I told him? And Sunil, I know I'm going to embarrass you because I do this every time. He could be a clothing 
model dude, couldn't he? Yes. I mean, he, look at it, he's handsome, and that, that is so, that's your color, man, that blue. Your wife is yelling yes. And his wife yes. is yelling yes. So. <laughs> she likes me in my Air Force blue. <laughs> yes. I like it. His wife used to be in the military. Yes. She was yes. Air Force And girl. I could see stripes on you because you got rank in the spirit, man. <laughs> awesome. So, Thank okay, you. so Sunil, like we always like to do, you have an anointing uh, that really takes a lot of the prophetic um, words that the Lord is speaking, and not just through this, this ministry, but really, you know, you've, you've been uh, able to just really hear what the prophetic uh, voices are saying. Um, and I'm always amazed at how God has you uh, take the prophetic words and bring clarity to it. And also, I call it uh, prophetic uh, mentoring. You just have a real ability to teach people uh, in the prophetic. So take it away. Thank you, Pastor. Start the night. Well, it's great to be here. You guys have tuned in to the right place if you want to get the prophetic perspective. For the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about prophetic perception. You have to see, perceive correctly in order to see a situation correctly. You can't rely on your senses to dictate how you should think or perceive a situation. It's true. You have it's to really rely good. on the word of the Lord. It's really good. And I want to illustrate this concept of prophetic perception by revisiting a prophetic word given by Pastor Hank on March 23rd, 2021. The date is March 23rd, 2021. And in this prophetic word, there is a specific and peculiar sign to look for. So let's take a look at this prophecy. I have not forsaken this nation. I am pouring out my spirit. I am bringing reformation and revival and great changes in the air. But then look to the sign of the eagle, for there shall be great gatherings of eagles Eagles that shall appear in very unusual places in you, United States. And this will be a sign that I have not forsaken the land of the eagle. But yet the eagle's wings have been torn and they have been frayed. But I am bringing restoration in this time, says the Lord. Praise God. Now in this prophecy, as I mentioned, a peculiar sign was given. The Spirit of the Lord instructed us to watch for the sign of the eagle. Now, this prophecy was given on March 23rd, 2021. Two days later, on March 25th, 2021, breaking news comes out, and let's take a look at this. Associated Press, on March 25th, 2021, had this headline, Bald Eagle Populations Soar in Lower 48 States, New U.S. Report Says. Wow. Another headline from the same day, NPR. Once imperiled, America's bald eagle populations are soaring. Come on, God. <laughs> the sign of the eagle. What a peculiar sign given. And two days later, we see the sign manifest in our news headlines. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service said the bald eagle population, the national symbol that's once teetered on the brink of extinct, extinction, is now flourishing. They were, it was almost extinct, and now over 300,000 eagles are flying across the 48 states of the U.S. Praise God. That's good. It's amazing. According to the experts, the success of the bald eagles is quite unusual. A report by the National Audubon Society found that two-thirds of North America's bird species are increasingly at risk of extinction, but not the bald eagle. Come it's on. amazing. Not the bald eagle, the national symbol. The prophecy, I want to remind you, stated that the sign of the eagle signifies that God has not forsaken the land of the eagle. Not forsaken. He is bringing reformation to America, revival and restoration. So my question to you today is whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the report of the media your social media friends, your acquaintances, or are you going to believe the word of the Lord? Come on. You have to perceive prophetically in order to see correctly for our nation. And prophetic perception is so important. I'm just going to take a couple more minutes. Oh, you're fine. That's good. The Israelites are in the wilderness. They've heard the prophetic word of the Lord from their leader, Moses. They're approaching the promised land, and Moses sends out 12 spies who have all heard the promise. Go spy out the land. Ten of, all 12 saw giants. Ten of them perceived incorrectly. 
They perceived according to what their senses told them. They saw the size of the giant and said, we are doomed. Mm -hmm. Two saw correctly because they perceived prophetically, Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua and Caleb, because they perceived correctly, they were able to possess their promise. So I'm asking you tonight, perceive prophetically so that we can possess the promises that God has, not only for us, but for our nation. Yes. Fantastic. That's so good. So good, Sonia. And tonight, that's why we do the pulse. Pastors Hank and Brenda are going to be sharing the prophetic word of the Lord so that we can calibrate our perception correctly according to, pro to the promises of God. Amen. So stay tuned. Amen. Amen. You know, Sunil, I want to say this. Let's give him a hand clap. That was really good, as, as yes. always. You know, what's amazing to me is when it says that the eagle population is not extinct. That, that really hit me. Because that's really what uh, people are saying. Well, it's over for the United States. Mm -hmm. It's over for America. There's never going to be a future for our children. Socialism is what's going to dictate and dominate. That's what people are saying. I hear it all the time. But you know what? God said that this nation is not being forsaken. The sign would be in the eagle. And we had proof that said it's not going to be extinct. In other words, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot stop the rising of the eagle. The patriots, you cannot stop That's the right. rising Come of this on. nation and the blessing of God upon it. Amen. So great yeah, well, job, man. Let me, I want to just yeah. draw one comment into yeah. something, Sunil, that you said before you go, that it was the majority of the spies Yes. And we have to, to yeah. pause and think about that. Yes. It was the majority of the spies that went with the flow of what they could perceive only through what they saw. And we have to be careful that we don't become part of that 10 and just perceive based on a news clip or what we saw yeah. scrolling by on our social media feed. We have to be so careful we don't become those people. It takes a, a different kind of faith Yes. Because the Bible said that Caleb had a different spirit. So it takes a different kind of faith, a different kind of person. And I promise you, they were not popular. So the no. Joshua and Caleb's of the world are never the popular people. They're the ones that make the waves that other people will criticize. Right. And it takes faith to stand in the perception and the prophetic purposes mm -hmm. of God and stay with what God said. It takes faith to do that. They were not popular, but they were the only two that possessed the promise. That's really the good. other ten died. Wow. Yeah. wow. It's really it's good. Amazing. Because they did not perceive correctly, they literally died in the wilderness. But if you perceive correctly, you will possess your promise. That's so Amen. powerful. All right. Come Thanks on. again, man. Amen. All right. Sunil, Give it up for you. Sunil. Praise God. I tell you, I, I love how he can pull stuff out. Well, what we want to talk about, those of you that are listening, again, welcome, welcome, welcome. And... Uh, uh, I just see somebody on the telephone. You are right now, you are, I see you literally, you're sitting there and you've got rashes on your arms and uh, you're in a, like a, a t-shirt looking um, shirt. And the reason is, is because there's been rashes that are, that are happening on your arm and there's been itching and irritation. And so you're having to kind of wear it sleeveless. But God is saying to you right now that there is a healing that is taking place. We command those rashes and whatever that is causing that irritation. We command it to stop. We command that to come out of your body. And we loose now the healing power of God upon you. You be made well right now in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. We want to talk about tonight... Um, and we're going to go over these a little bit. And I want to do just a little bit of a prophetic uh, mentoring on, on some things that are important before we get into some specific prophecies that are going to give you hope. Uh, we're going to talk about calendar dates again and God's event. Too many are setting calendar dates. They've been setting calendar dates. Now, it's one thing when God says, look to the sign of the flower, or he says, look to the month of March or something like that to give us an indication on, on what specifically to look for. Um, it's another thing to set specific dates. So what happens is when, you know, uh, I think there was January 6th date that was thrown out, January 20th. I think some people were throwing out April, whatever, or even, you know, the month of April. And, and what happens is uh, we have to understand that we're in the process of God. He's moving. 
and he has been moving, and he's going to continue to move. But if your date comes and goes, that's exactly what the enemy wants because he wants you to think that nothing has happened, nothing is happening, or nothing is going to happen. And so it's to pull you back into the narrative or the, the voice that's speaking right now. And this is why it's a very dangerous thing to attack prophetic voices that are speaking for God. And the reason is, is you cannot tell me that the majority of the voice of truth with what's going on in our nation, that the voice of truth just happens to be the media. <laughs> if, if, if the media is how God is communicating the voice of truth in the earth, we are in trouble. That's a fact. <laughs> so most of the time, the way the prophetic works, especially, and, and here's another thing, people will take Old Testament scriptures and try to judge the prophets, and it shows your lack of theological understanding. It, it, you can't do that. That's not how the prophets were judged in the New Testament. So you could, you, could, you could write the Ezekiel scriptures, the Deuteronomy scriptures, and all that, but it's not how God uses or how he views judging the prophets. But what, what needs to be said in, in all of this is the, how God communicates in the earth and how he communicated through prophets is many times what was being said by the media, meaning what was the cultural buzzwords, uh, proverbs, they would call it proverbs, or what was being spoken of in the land, and people were believing it. Most of the time, God would send a prophet to speak something contrary. That's just how it rolled. Right, and, and so the media has been saying a lot of things. They're telling you that you're, you're crazy if you think that... Uh, was stolen. They, they say that you're crazy if you think that 45 should not, uh, or you think that 45 should be in office. They think you're crazy if you think that what is in the, 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 the clown show and the circus going on is, is really what, that's what they want you to believe. But God already told on them, and we're going to see that ahead of time, that he already said that this is what they were going to do. That's how you know that they're lying to you. But we're going to talk about calendar dates, God's events. We're going to talk about signs and God's agenda. Because the Lord talked, Brenda, about volcanoes, for example, yes. as being a sign that would, would happen in the earth. Because he said when the volcanoes would begin to erupt, in fact, there's prophecies from 2015, where he said you're going to be entering into the years of the volcano, where all at the same time they would begin to erupt. How many know we're seeing that right now? It's happening in the earth. And he said, because I want to show on the right and the left things that have been happening underground behind the scenes that you don't know of but God says the lava will be a sign as it comes to the top that the things that have been done in the secret place diabolical things are going to come and they're going to be exposed we're going to talk about behold the new God has declared we're in a new era he's declared that we're in the decade of difference he said it would start off harsh but this harsh season is not going to remain okay because God has a decade that he's called the decade of difference, but there's another decade that he's looking at even after this. So that, that is going to set us up for incredible glory. He also talked about how that we're in uh, a time that the children are going to be honored because of what they've been, uh, what's happened to them <coughs> by way of trafficking. And he also said indoctrina indoctrination. That's right. You know, God's had enough of this, you know, trying to force upon our children lies and perversion and things that, uh, you know, you mess with the children according to God, and it'd be better that a millstone be tied around your neck than you cause one of those little ones to stumble. So, yeah, yeah, listen to me. Abortion. Come on. Murder. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about, uh, you know, teaching our children perverted things in school. That's right. Okay? Sex education is nothing more than sexual perversion. Right. Right. You're touching the children, and you're going to pay for and it. And teaching them lawlessness. It's teaching been them terrible. Lawlessness. It's terrible. Anytime you say that, the trolls try to call you out and say there's something wrong with you. No, there's something wrong with you, troll. And the fact that you got a joke about something like pedophilia shows me that you are absolutely of a bad spirit. And God will defend the righteous and those that stand for righteousness, and he'll expose people like you. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a global awakening that's happening. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how there's a divine reset and reversal. You know, on March 15th of 2020, Brenda, I was out 2.30 in the morning, March 15th, uh, praying in our, in our living room. And I was taken up uh, in the spirit in a vision, and I was over looking at the United States. And one of the things that God said to me in that is he said, uh, 
divine reversal, divine reset, but he yes. also talked about how there would be a Hezekiah moment that would come to the president. You remember that? Yes. And then a few months later, uh, he actually uh, came down with, they said, and, and all of that. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that too. Yes, we're going to yes. talk also about the revolution of light that God spoke about. We're going to talk about strange lights in the sky, spoils of battle. Uh, the Lord will strike, and can he make rivers in the desert? Uh, that, which is very interesting because of what's happening even in the uh, Arizona audit. So I want to begin. I want to talk about something. Uh, if they could put up Ezekiel 7, verse 26. In Ezekiel 7, verse 26, I want to just do a little teaching, and then we're going to get into the prophetic side of, of, of things. So in Ezekiel chapter 7, there is a strong scripture here, and I like how it's really written in the amplified version. Can they put it up on the screen so that those viewing on social media can also see it, please? Ezekiel 7, verse 26. It says this. Um, the amplified version, I believe, says it this way. Disaster upon disaster. Rumor upon rumor, then shall they seek. Are they having problems? Okay, there it is. Thank you, guys. Uh, disaster upon disaster, rumor upon rumor, then shall they seek a vision of the prophet or from the prophet. And God said something to me, and if you're a prophetic voice or if you're listening to prophetic voices, prophetic voices cannot get caught up in the rumors. Rumors don't necessarily have to be false. It could just be hearsay or what, what people are discussing. Because when, when disasters happen or chaos happens, the prophet can't be caught up in the chaos. Some people just prophesy according to what's happening in the earth. And then they base that as their prophetic words. No, can you prophesy something ahead of time? You know, and, and always remember, the true spirit of, of the Lord on the prophets today prophesy redemptive plans. Okay, it's not all about, well, you're a prophet and you can prophesy down judgments and things. Yeah. There's sometimes I've had to bring warnings uh, out of this mouth from the Lord. But most of the time, if I bring a warning, it's always followed up with God's redemptive plan of help and hope. And that's so important because that's where a lot of prophets get off. And, and it's why they can write books, some of these guys, and then they don't, their words don't, they don't come to pass. So always remember, disaster upon disaster, rumor upon rumor. Those rumors don't have to be false. The prophet can't get caught up into what is being said in the land. That's why it's best if you're a prophet, you don't listen to the news, you don't read the headlines, you don't, you know, look at all the little videos and clips and things that people send because you cannot be part of the rumor because when the rumors are going on in the land and the disasters may happen, they need a voice that they can go to and say, how does God speak? God does nothing in the earth unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Amos 3, 7. That's why the, the voice is not the media. That's not how God communicates, Amen. okay? But it says this, and this is, if they could put the verse back up, notice this. Why are they going to seek the vision from the prophet? Because it says the law shall perish from the priest. In other words, certain ministers you can't even go to to get what God is saying because they're going to sell out to the rumors. Even counsel from the ancients, even, even, even from the elders, they're going to be selling out. Listen, we see that today. There's prophets that have caved in, and if they've done that, that's between them and God. But don't make that the standard for everybody else. Amen. Okay? And somehow call them out. Because the day is coming where we're going to see that what God said is going to stand. And it's going to happen. And we have to stay true to it. The second thing is, look at Ezekiel chapter 12. Verses 22 through 28, because this is where some people are at today, I believe. They're getting caught up in the rumors, and so as a result, they're beginning, people cannot get caught up in what's being said in the land either, to where all of a sudden they begin to believe these false narratives. And, and just because, yeah, go let, ahead, me, can, let me interject something on that, and this is so important. Just because it's out there, and it literally happened, and it's in the news, okay? I, I saw a report today, obviously we know that this audit is going on in Arizona. And so the pushback by the left has been, well, you know, don't continue to do this audit because as long as you keep doing it, now this is how ridiculous this is, as long as you keep doing this audit and you keep investigating this, you are continuing to cause the American people to lose. Well, I have a news flash for you. <laughs> we lost that faith on November the 3rd. Yeah. And fact of the matter yeah, is, yeah, when you shut everything down at when what, they 11 shut the whole thing night, down, sure, we all lost <laughs> faith. So, in fact, I was talking to somebody who was doing some work on our house today, and 
I said, you know, I mean, I said, I, I mean, I have to speak for me. I don't know how you feel about going to, their confidence is lost. Like, I'm going to go, uh, when I know that the whole system has been rigged, we got to fix that. But the point is, um, and that's a whole other topic, but the point is we cannot watch these narratives. There are false narratives being played across the airwaves. They take a little piece of truth and turn it into false. I'll give you an example. They're doing it right now with the race issue. Okay, they are twisting that thing so far out of control. I mean, you could braid it up and yank it out of your scalp. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's just like, it pull your hair out crazy. The stuff that they come up with in the news that has nothing to do with truth. They've done it with, and, and we're watching the news take little pieces of truth, Hank, and yeah, then twist right. it and make people believe a lie. This is why, if you heard, were here Sunday, Pastor read the scripture. They take the truth of God and turn it into a lie. They have taken things regarding marriage. I mean, the abortion issue, you mentioned that. Okay, now abortion is never, it's murder. I don't care if it's one baby or six million babies. It's murder no matter how you slice that. Yet they take a story of one person, mm -hmm. by the way, only 7% of all abortions performed have anything to do with issues like, I think it's like 2 or 3% have to do with a case of rape or a medical issue or to save the life of a mother. Those things in that category fall into less than 7% of the millions and millions and millions. Over 93% of abortions are performed for social reasons because it's inconvenient for the mother to be pregnant. Now, the media, it twists that. They will take something and turn it to a lie. And my point is, Hank, this is why we have to be so careful when we listen to these things. I believe it's the reason, and I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I believe it's the reason that we have Christian people on the left that will stand for abortion, that will stand for defunding our police. I'm sorry, what kind of stupid wants to get rid of the cops in this country? Who are you going to call? Amen. So the point is, is we listen to these narratives. And as Christians, Hank, I was yeah. reading the scripture today, Matthew, the 24th chapter. Jesus said three times in the end times, three times he said the words, take heed that no one deceives you. Right. Well, how are they going to deceive us in the last days? Jesus has already prophetically seen that we were going to have Facebook and we we're going to have Instagram and Twitter and we would see these headlines and be suckered in. And you said something so powerful. This is why we get caught up in the Proverbs mm -hmm. of the land is because we read these things. People read headlines and believe them without reading the story. Mm -hmm. And then you find out after you shared it somewhere that it's eight years old or four years old and they recycle these things to push a narrative that's not true and it's and and this is deceiving even God's people it is it's Amen. deceiving God's people and it's well, why we don't have his perspective right the and, Proverbs and when you don't land. have God's perspective you're not going to speak correctly it's the truth and that's the reason why they've they've put you know obviously they say there's and people lost their lives but really it's amazing to me in the Hebrew year of the mouth the last couple of years the mouth to speak the mouth to declare the enemy has pushed very hard to put a mask on our mouth keep us from speaking also not just a physical mask regarding the the but really to get us to be quiet True. to shut down churches to shut down our voices and 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 that's what listen 46 that really doesn't exist okay you you can't you can't acknowledge something that was done by treasonous acts and and thievery True. okay now listen to me if if you are willing to let it go okay and 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 you really feel like he won don't you want to know the truth and and tell people like us to be quiet then right what what, what, what are you afraid of that's why they don't, don't want the audit because here's home. what you have to understand if you are a true american patriot and a christian of the kingdom of god that this nation was dedicated to his honor you would be saying, um, Lord, I'm a little concerned with this masked up over our mouth, shutting down our churches, and nobody wanting to talk about you've allowed them to steal your voice and your freedom. Right. And then 
you're going to live in you're going to live in the after effects of your freedom stolen. So we have to speak up and we have to go back to November 3rd. We have to see what happened. Okay? Yes or no? Absolutely. So That's awesome. let the truth come out. But here's what's happening in Ezekiel chapter 12. Let's move along quickly for the sake of time. Um, Son of man, what is this proverb that you have in the land of Israel saying, the days are prolonged and every vision or prophecy is failing? <laughs> Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord, I will make this proverb to stop and it shall no more use it as a proverb in the United States. But say unto them, the days are at hand and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering what? So witchcraft gets involved. That's what we're hearing coming through the media. Within the house of Israel. It's getting into the church. People are arguing. I'm, I'm listening to people absolutely argue about stuff that has... It's like, even, even a lot of, like you just mentioned about some of the race baiting and the race fires. I'm not saying racism doesn't exist. You didn't hear me say that. My best friend was Bishop Harry Jackson, who happens to be in heaven, and we talked every single day. He taught me more about racism and about this nation and the history of the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. Come on. It's the truth. Who really freed the slaves was not the Democrats. Okay? Planned Parenthood was raised up. Yes, to exterminate the black population. Yeah. And yet they played you. Yeah. Yep. You ought to be outraged. Yeah. Absolutely the truth. So, the, 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 so don't even go there with me. No. What I'm seeing today, and I don't know where I lost my train of thought. We're twisting the truth. <laughs> Tw twisting the truth. And so they want you to believe stuff, but let's go on. I don't yeah, remember what The proverb of the land. Proverb right. of the land. Oh, okay, witchcraft. We don't realize that a lot of what we're dealing with is, is spiritual warfare that has been brought on through witchcraft. It was amazing to me, Brenda. And God prophesied in August. Let me just kind of move ahead a little bit. This is good. Um, in August 16th of, of 2020, God said this, The enemy shall overplay his hand, and he will come to do what he, his nature is, to steal, kill, and destroy. And this is what he desires to bring between now and the end of your year. He wants to disrupt, divert, Deceive in the United States. And this is August of 2020. He wants to kill, steal, destroy, bring diversion, delay, deception through chaos of a planned thing that shall shift and reshape even things as they look now. Now God says, do you think this is your future? So God already called them out. God already called you out, B, and, and all the people that are in there with you. He already called it out, so this is what you're going to do. But what was amazing to me when this prophecy came out, I remember seeing in the news, the same fake news that, that loves to push their agenda, showed uh, massive covens of witches and warlocks that were specifically gathering to pray against and to bring uh, disorder. Yes. You remember that? How many yes. of you saw those in the yes. audience here? You saw it, those of you by phone, those of you on social media. And, and what's amazing to me is you, 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 you had Christians, yeah, we, they did gather, they did pray, and, and, and God heard that, and He did answer, and He is answering. But what's amazing to me is how many people in the midst of warfare, and the enemy was more unified than what the church was. That's my point. Yeah, it's true. Talk about that. Okay? A kingdom divided can't stand. It's amazing. We got people attacking the most pro-life president in the history of our nation. Right. Okay, he was a friend, he was a friend of the church, that's okay, he absolutely. fought for your religious liberties, but you don't like his tweets. Okay, you know what I liked about his tweets? Is somebody was standing up for goodness sake and calling out the, the, the nonsense. Yeah, could he maybe have used a different way of doing things? I don't know. That's between him and whoever counsels him. But I do want to say, I think he was amazing. He is amazing. And I think that what he stood for was amazing. And I think that most people under that kind of pressure... And that kind of platform would have caved in. But President Trump, you didn't cave in. And we salute you and we honor you. And God has not forgotten you. Nor the position and the place that you're to hold. You don't dedicate the National Day of Prayer Come on. 
It's going to be interesting if this thing goes this long, if we're even going to have a national day of prayer. Right. It, it'll be really interesting. How many times did he talk about the Lord, and yet Christians are now, we are, we are evangelicals for B. No, you're evangelicals for D. Democratic, devilish, liberal, socialistic ideas that want to take and shut down your church that you say you love, your Jesus that you say you worship. It's the truth. Well, pastor, I don't believe that. Look at the executive orders. Look at, look at their agenda. Jesus said you know them by their fruits. And I think if you were to put the fruits of 45 and the fruit of B together, you would see where God stands on the issue. So don't be ignorant. Amen. That's great. That's great. And those of you that write, yeah, you know the, the watch people? Yeah, I said it. Way to go. <laughs> because what are you going to do when this stuff happens, you that write? You're going to melt like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I'm melting, yeah, because you're lies. God, God's a spirit of truth. And truth always outweighs lies. I like this. No flattering divination is going to be within the house of Israel. For I'm the Lord, I'll speak, and the word that I speak shall come to pass. And it shall no longer be prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word, and I'll perform it, saith the Lord God. Hallelujah. And if God say anything, I will say the word, and I'll perform it, saith the Lord God. And again, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, they of the house of Israel say the vision that he sees is for many days to come. And he prophesies of times that are so far off. Go say to them, thus saith the Lord, there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore, but the word which I've spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. That is, because people are wanting us to put dates and times, and I'm going to tell you, January 6th with that, that, that insurrection that they're trying to put up on 45, let me just say this, I said, God, what do you want me to say? Because remember when all of that, God said, Hank, stay with the story I've been telling you since 9-11 that I would raise up a president from New York that will turn this nation and bring it back on course. And I haven't changed. God hasn't changed his mind. So I'm not going to change my mind. I'm not going to add to the story. I'm not going to cave in because you want me to and you think I should. And I'm not saying that in, uh, in, haut in haughtiness. I'm saying that because I answer to a higher authority. I answer to God himself. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go on. One thing I want to mention also, just with every prophetic word, it must be mixed with faith. That's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. It says, the word preached did not uh, profit them because it was not mixed with faith. Same way with the prophetic words. Also remember that the enemy is always after the prophetic words. He's after the prophetic. The devil comes immediately to steal the word. That's not just this Bible. And if you're listening by the phone, it's also prophetic words. The devil comes immediately That's right. to steal uh, not only the word, logos, but the rhema of God. And uh, that's why he came immediately and, and uh, used the media and other people to attack what the prophets were saying. But I want to make this last point before we get into prophecies. Remember the important thing regarding prophecies is you've got to always keep pressing and declaring the prophetic word. That's 1 Timothy 1.18. Wage a good warfare by the prophecies that's been given to you, that by those prophecies you may hold faith, a good conscience, and avoid shipwreck. The second thing you have to remember with prophecy is even when you don't hear it or hear, know, or see anything, or it doesn't look like the prophecy is coming to pass. So maybe you don't hear anything, you don't know anything, you don't see anything, or it doesn't look like it. Remember the fig tree. Jesus spoke to it, and it didn't look like anything happened, was happening, or would happen. But the process played out, and they saw Wow, what Jesus spoke really did happen. Right. Lastly on this point, there's a process that must be played out with certain prophetic words. Can you imagine marching around the walls of Jericho? Here you are. We don't know how big the walls of Jericho were. How big was that city? But it must have been big enough for millions of Jews to march around this thing, you know, seven times. Can you imagine? What were they thinking at that time? Right. I bet you some of them that were were thinking that's why they weren't allowed to say anything and they're marching around i bet they're thinking man this is a waste of time it's hot out here it's hot out here i'm exhausted this isn't working 
What's the point of this? Boy, that, that Moses is a false prophet. Not Moses, Joshua, Joshua. is a false prophet. Well, they might have been saying about Moses. Yeah, they might have been saying about him. But God was having them walk out the process that they would eventually be part of the manifestation of it. Amen. And there's things that are being played out right now behind the scenes that we don't know about. And what God is showing me is that we are coming into the season where it's almost like a, 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 a layer of onion. God is just peeling back the layers of, of the onion where all of a sudden it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring a reaction. Have you ever peeled an onion and you start crying? Do some people <laughs> cry with an onion. How many of you don't cry with an onion? Okay. But eventually these things are going to start coming to manifestation. We're going to start seeing more and more revealing information. Some of us are just looking for one big event. And I think if you're just looking for one big event, you're going to get disappointed because I think there will be a bigger event, but there's many layers that will lead to that event. And so don't get your, your eyes on just an event. Get your eyes and start looking at God and what he's saying and look at the signs that he's given us. Volcanoes, snow, how many got that cold, unusual places, earthquakes, uh, these strange sights, the birds, um, it's a few of them. I don't remember other, other well, ones. Well, and can I say this about the layering? And I think we have to go back to Scripture, too, because, you know, God, He's done things. You think about throughout the Bible how God did things in layers. Yes, there were big events. But then think about the deliverance from Egypt. Israel's deliverance from Egypt was not just only the Red Sea parting. There were several layers that happened in that deliverance. And I believe that that is so important to yeah, remember that God is about, you know, think about all of the things that, that now are regretting that. And because yeah, it was the number one search uh, Google <laughs> word. It's and, time to repent and get back on the Lord's side. That's true. But that, you know, think about if it weren't for all these layers, we probably wouldn't see some of these things coming to the surface. So in, in, from my vantage point, I've enjoyed being able to see things, and there have been things. You know, Jesus said something powerful. There's nothing hidden. Come on, you know the Bible. There's nothing hidden or done in the secret, okay? The Bible tells us also that your sin will find you out, okay? Things always come to a place of exposure. People have done evil things. They always get exposed. It always comes to the surface, and we're watching things come to the surface now that I, in, in our country, have, they've had a cap on for years, and it wasn't until Trump the wild card came along and suddenly began to uh, shed light and highlight things that nobody else wanted to confront because of the backlash. So, you know, God has used this to pull these layers back, Hank. But, you know, here's what always happens. It always comes. We always get to the core of it. And the root problem, the root issue. So just have confidence and yeah. stay the course with God and know that God is... God is a righteous God. This is what we have to know. He will expose evil. He will bring things to the surface. That's true. And he will always exalt righteousness. Okay, iniquity. You know, these, and maybe we'll have time to read that scripture again in Psalms later, but the, the wicked or those that commit iniquity, they are sealing their own fate. And the day will come where that will be seen by everybody. So don't give up in knowing that Thank God you, is peeling the onion back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I, I want to just go on to a thing, but I just saw somebody. You have a, your, it looks like your dog is right next to you. And they've been having problems breathing. And you've been concerned. It's been a little bit distracting, even as I'm talking, that they're just breathing a little interesting. You've been concerned. Listen, God cares about even... Uh, the things like that that uh, is part of your family and just so you know we just declare right now yeah I'm praying for a dog I pray for my dogs all the time I just speak over you yes. and I declare that that dog breathes right and normal right now in the name of Jesus and that everything turns around for good yes, immediately in, in the Jesus name, name Jesus. I speak that right now Amen. if you don't have a dog you don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> But listen, he said, you know, he knows if a sparrow falls, he knows if a dog is having problems breathing. Right. February 28th, 2021. This is not the season or season that I've planned. And I declare to you, and I speak ahead of time, says the Spirit of God, that this would be 2021, W-O-N, the year of victory. 
And yet men have grown weary because of the battles. God says victory always comes after there has been battles. And what I've planned shall take me through this year. Do not be afraid. Do not grow weary. No, I am not delaying or prolonging. So God began to speak, and he's been saying something very interesting. Isaiah 43, 19 is a scripture that I like, and we're going to talk about when God said, Behold the new. And Isaiah 43, 19 says this. It says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? In other words, it's going to be so obvious. This is the season that we're in. And I'll even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I never caught that, awesome. that part because God prophesied that on yes, Sunday. I will make way in the wilderness. Come on, Arizona. <laughs> and rivers in the desert. Come on, let it be. Let it flow. But God prophesied something on March 28th that talked about the new that's coming. And this is so important because if you remember Joseph in the Bible, how many remember Joseph in the Bible? The Bible said that he wanted his bones to be carried with the children of Israel and placed over into the land of their promise. The reason Joseph could do that is he could see the future. He believed what God said. Some Christians can't see the future. They only see the television screen. Some Christians can't put their faith in what God says because it sounds so opposite of what they're hearing in the land. So they think that the voice of the media is the voice of truth, and they don't know how to hear the voice of God. Joseph wanted his bones in the promised land because he knew that the gospel was preached to Father Abraham. And God spoke to Father Abraham about the gospel, that there would be a Messiah that would arise and, 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 and would uh, you know, rise up again. Joseph wanted his bones because 500, grave, or 500 witnessed them uh, alive, but the grave you know, were open. The, grave, what do you call the, the graves, grave, were, the graves open. were open. I bet one of those was Joseph. And he wanted his bones in the place of the resurrection where the place of promise would be because he could see the future. That's amazing. And so God has been prophesying to us March 28, 2021. God says, it's a new season. And so it is, says the Spirit of the living God, that too many in the earth are filled with fear. They have received a wrong and incorrect prognostication of events and an outcome of events and the season and the era that you are in. I declare to you at this time, United States and the earth, that you're in a new season. And I've declared it to you, and I speak it again, that I am the God who brings forth at the time of your season. You say, but Lord, do you not understand how bad things are, how bad things are getting, and how bad things will become? God says, I'm not listening to those words. For if I had listened to words such as you speak, Lazarus would have remained in the grave. Jairus' daughter would have been dead, and the Son of God would never have come and been raised with resurrection power of newness of life. So again, it's what you're hearing, and even Sunil talked about it, that's formulating what we believe. God promised something that's coming. He prophesied that there's coming something new in honor of the children for things that have been done to the children. Listen to what God says. And, and the reason this, before I share the, these prophecies, you have to understand it's Exodus 14. There's a judgment that is coming against liberalism and their ideologies that have been against the Lord. They really have. Okay? When God is a God who said marriage is between one man and one woman, He's not against those people that choose otherwise. He's against their ideologies and their liberal agenda to change what He said is the definition and what you are to teach your children and your children's children. Man with woman in marriage is a sign of true covenant. That's what he said. He also didn't have 700 different uh, or 70, whatever the number is of gender identification ways. He said, there's only two. I made them male and female. God made he them. Those liberal ideas that, you know, life does not believe, uh, you know, happen at conception. That's a liberal idea. Right. Okay, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And it's and getting on. more twisted. And it's getting more <laughs> twisted. But God had enough of Egypt pressing on his people. And the nation he raised up in Israel. And in Exodus 14, he judged it. 
And he said that the Egyptians and, and their army were no more. So there is coming, Brenda. Yes. This is what people need to understand. They think that they're getting, a, getting by with what they're doing. Right. <laughs> Jesus had enough. He went over and he turned over the tables. He's going to do the same with executive orders and things that they're signing into law. Right. He also had enough where he came and he dealt with those who are trying to press their agenda. And so what I'm saying is a lot of things that people think are going to stick and will always be the way of the present and the future is not. God said August 2019 and September 2019, he said there would be a plague as in the days of Egypt and Israel. And he said the decade would start off harsh, but we would come into rest. And one of the things that the Lord spoke, and this is why I don't think that November 3rd is going away. And I said this to those of you that follow, and you remember in this room, God said that he was dedicating and to the children and to their future. Why would God allow it to be stolen? He's not. Okay? Watch what he says. Because people are praying. What, what, That's yeah. so important. So watch what's coming, because some people are fearing. It doesn't mean we don't stand up. There's, there's certain um, legislation that they're trying to pass even in our schools here, right here in Nebraska. Doesn't mean that we hear these prophecies and think, okay, we don't have to do anything. No, this is why you need to speak up. You need to fight for what God is saying. March 28th, 2021, God says, I've said that you are coming into the new and I've not changed my mind. Therefore, your politics will change and new will come and it shall be better, says the living God. Your schools, elementary, junior high, high school, your universities shall quickly behold the new. Notice he said quickly. For there should be a throwing out and a throwing off of the vomit that has been of a prior season where they've tried to indoctrinate your children. This shall not be in the new era that I am speaking, says the Lord. Isn't that powerful? Let's go to the next one. Number five. God says media will change in the new era. How many have about had enough of it? Yes. How many just want truth? I mean, we don't, we don't watch the news. I we mean, haven't watched very, the news very at all. Little. I, I mean, mean, I've deleted almost all the apps, but I mean, I do check a few decent ones. But well, I'm glad you do, it. but I don't. And I'm not saying that like you're not <laughs> as good as me or anything like that. I just... I did look at what was going on in Arizona. <laughs> okay, good. Then you can, you can let us know. <laughs> yeah. Is it good? Well, they, I mean, okay. they're doing good. Right. They're doing good. Let me, let me just share this with you real quick. Media in the new era. I want to talk about March 14th of 2018. How many of you have heard where they want to bring a new, uh, 45 wants to bring a new, uh, create his own social media platform and network? How many of you have heard that? This was prophesied actually on March 14th of 2018. So this was uh, three years ago. God says, listen to my voice for I speak. Out of this presidency and what shall come will be their own network. Yes, they shall begin to seize the airwaves, and they will say, we do not need CNN. We do not need Fox News. This is 2018. We don't need them, even though some have been a blessing. We shall raise up our own network. And then the prophecy goes on, and God says, why do you think that this one who sits as president has spent so many years in television? Because I put it in his heart, and I put it in the heart of those around him. To why be continued to be lied about when you can speak from your own platform? So God said that was coming back March 14, 2018. March 28, 2021. There shall be new networks that arise upon the land, the United States. And others will be flushed. <laughs> and God says, I say this with a double meaning so that you will understand that one shall be, they shall be embarrassed of what they've aligned themselves with. And secondly, they shall be flushed as in gone. And new networks shall arise that shall bring forth truth to the people. It's coming quickly, says the Lord. It shall be the people's network. And there will be a new sitcoms that will arise, new movies that will ban sexual scenes, nudity, and even language. But you ask, are you serious, God? Have you seen America? Have you seen my future, says the Lord? Have you seen the new era that I've declared? Amen. Amen. And then he goes on to say this. Listen to this by the telephone. You're going to like this one. Depends if you're one of those people that maybe you're just listening so that you can write about stuff and you don't like us. But, but here, here's what he said. So, so hopefully you're okay. And, and you might want to get some, get some water because you're going to start sweating. Do not make me laugh, says the living God. I will turn over the executive orders. 
I will turn over the legislation that they think they can, that they can get by with. And as I turn over the tables, I'll turn these over and new laws shall come that shall bring freedom and liberty to your United States. I did not say bondage. I said freedom and liberty shall come for you're entering into the new. Hallelujah. And, and in order for that, let's give God a hand clap. Are you ready for that? Another thing that's, that's happening is God is dealing with a global awakening. And uh, he talked about that God's going to start dealing with China. Now, when we say China, you know, we're not talking about the precious brothers and sisters that are in the underground part of China. We're talking about red China, communist China that had an agenda to, and it's going to be found out that their hands were involved in it. Yep. And so God says, let me tell you, there's going to be a new China. I'm going to deal with red China. I'm going to deal with the dragon who's at war with you. And I'll deal with them harshly and I'll shake them, even their economy. I'll shake their finances. I'll even shake the ground. And there will even come a new China that will arise and will ask, can a democracy arise? Mm. Can a hidden church of the underground begin to become above ground? This is what I'm speaking. And God says, even yes, uh, from China, new churches shall arise in public squares and it shall happen all across Asia. He even talked about a new Russia. And he said, I've been dealing with you, Putin. There shall come a liberty and freedom. And there shall come unusual laws that shall be like a whip cracked at immorality and sexual sins. And they shall ask, what is this that is happening in Russia? There shall come a standard, a moral standard that shall be raised in Russia. And this shall begin to affect other nations in Europe and a moral standard that shall even affect your internet. Wow. See, if all you think of is, is bad, 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 and I know you're thinking, well, you don't know how bad um, uh, the world is. Part of a global awakening is is not only a spiritual awakening, but it's an awakening. And this is why I believe God is taking his time with the events that God's doing it on purpose so that we can be awakened to the truth. It's true. Don't you want to know the truth? Yep. Don't you think we deserve the truth? Don't you think our voice demands? Yes. So God's doing this on purpose. And, and what people need to understand is part of what the Lord is allowing is he's allowing this evil to be exposed because it's him exposing it and, and, and judging it harshly. I'm not saying evil is going to disappear, but it's not going to have the level of influence or the spiritual, uh, how do I say it, the spiritual assisting of it mm -hmm. or licensing or agreement of it. Mm -hmm. Especially when there's spiritual awakening, people begin to say no to sin. <laughs> they begin to say, no devil, you're not bringing this. We yeah. don't want that junk on our TV. Yep. We don't That's want right. those lies in our media. We don't want it in our schools. You start changing the heart of a man. It's true. And everything else begins to change and reflect it's true. it. true. Which, Hank, I want to add, you know, a lot of these prophecies you're reading, and I want to encourage everybody that's here, and if you're watching, uh, we post many of these all on hankabrenda.org, so, because I know there's people that will ask immediately, how can we get a print copy of some of that, these concerning Russia and all of this. Uh, we put it hankabrenda.org. Go out, get those, because I know many of you pray. And it is important, and you kind of alluded to this earlier, it is very important that when we hear a prophetic word that we back it up with prayer. You know, Elijah did that with his own prophecies. He prophesied, you've heard me say this before, First Kings, you, you see ver, or chapter 17, 18, he prophesied that it would not rain. But then if you go over to the book of James, James 5 said he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And then the same happened again. You know, the, he, he brought the rain back, but the Bible says he prayed. He prayed again, and then the rain was restored. So mm -hmm. even Elijah the prophet, he declared things prophetically, but then he backed that up with prayer. He bathed it in prayer. So intercessors, prayer warriors, it's so important that when you hear a word, don't just gawk at the prophecy. Right. We have to be careful of that because, you know, it's great. You know, I listen, I'm in here at Lord of Hosts Church on Sunday. Pastor will give a word and we'll all be shouting. We're excited. But we should take that word. Don't just forget about it. It's take true. that word home. Pray it out in your prayer time. Say, Father, I thank you you're going to bring about a global awakening in nations like Russia. That, God, you're yes. dealing with the dragon China, as the prophet said. And begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. And I believe as we do that, it's us, the church, 
Okay, this we can't just look at the world and just see what they're going to do. We, the church, are the ones that have the kingly authority in the heavens to pray, yeah. to declare, decree, and to prophesy. Yeah. And so we got to get behind. Yeah. That's why, Hank, it is so important mm -hmm. people don't just criticize prophets. Oh well, I don't believe that. Oh, it didn't look like it came to pass. Come on, they did that in the in the Bible. They critiqued the prophets, stoned the prophets, and it ultimately. It, in many ways, it prevented things that God wanted to do from even God because people stoned the prophetic word. And so therefore, what God wanted to manifest in them didn't manifest. And Israel was blinded to their Messiah as a result. So it is so important that we take those words. We be like the church of the, uh, the Berean church. We study it. We bathe it with the scripture. And we get in, the, in, in our prayer closet and pray those things through because nothing can stop a praying mm -hmm. people. Yeah, amen. Think about your own life. How many of you are radically sold out to Jesus Christ? Raise your hand in here. Those of you by the phone, you can raise your hand too. Think about what kind of stuff you did. Not that you're bringing recall to it, but once your heart changed, you didn't want to do evil anymore. Right. And, and there's a so simple, good. simple scripture that sometimes I don't hear people talk about, especially the doom and gloom guys. The scripture says that it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Mm -hmm. Isn't that, isn't that what the scripture says? Yes, yes. It didn't say it's the judgments of God or the harshness of God. It's the goodness of God. So stop right there. If it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance, how does that fit into an awakening? Well, an awakening, you can't really have an awakening without God's presence or glory. And God's glory and his goodness, you cannot separate them. Exodus 33, 18. Moses said, God, I want to see your glory. First thing God said in verse 19, he said, I'm going to cause my goodness to pass before you. So if God's That's glory awesome. is really coming and we're praying for it, we're already starting to see it with gatherings on the streets and this different cities and the beaches and stuff. We're seeing God's glory. It's also God's goodness. God's goodness is what leads men to change. Also, what overcomes evil? That's right. And so when men's heart get touched by the glory, they begin to realize the goodness of God leads them to repent and as a result, their hearts change. And if you get enough hearts changing in cities and in nations and in communities, guess what it's going to do? You're going to overcome what? Evil. Evil. Yeah, but right now, we've got to wake up the church. They need to, they need to get back yes, to, sir. you know. So, all right, let's go over a couple more things that we want to pray for the people, Brenda. Yes. Um, we're going to do that. I'm going to turn over to you in just a minute. Let me just read a couple prophecies real quick. Let's talk about the strange lights in the skies and the great removals in the earth. This is March 21st of 2021. God says there shall be strange sights that shall be in the heavens. Strange sights and sounds will continue throughout the earth. Stop right there. How many have heard this? This has already been happening. And God goes on and says, do not be alarmed. Do not be afraid as there will be sounds that you will say. And they will say, what is this? Where is this coming from? What is happening within the sky? What is happening within the soil? And God says, I'm shaking the heavens. I'm shaking the earth and I'm shaking the sea and the dry land. So watch the sounds of the movement of my feet and my hosts or my angels that are doing at this time carrying out my plan. So how many have been hearing about the strange sights, the strange noise? God says it's his feet, but it's also his angels, the hosts that are carrying out his plans. And with this, listen to this, shall be very quickly upon you the season which shall be known as in the earth as removal. There shall be great removals that will take place. And I will establish my plan, and I will establish my faces for those plans. And I will establish what my agenda has been to make this nation great again. For this is the season that you're in. Do not be alarmed of those who have already been removed from the earth, and it will be known and revealed. Those who, that shall be removed from their place, do not be alarmed, even as the stench of death begins to fill the airways of those who shall be brought to justice, those who shall turn upon their own sword. Wow, that doesn't sound very happy. <laughs> Let's go to another one. This was March 28th of 2021. Get ready for the spoils of battle. So is all of this worth going through? You know, sometimes when you're going through a battle, you think, oh my gosh, I can't take any more of it. But how many of you have ever gone through something and, and, and your hindsight looks back and you're like, man, I learned so much from that. Not that God, God doesn't test you with sickness and disease. I'm not talking about that. But how many of you have learned something through some of the battles 
and, and, and things that you've had to face in your life. Raise your hand in this room. Mm -hmm. You can raise on the telephone. You can raise. Yeah, we learn things. Yes. And, and one of the things that I feel like is the spoils of battle that God prophesied. He prophesied that April 18th, just a couple of weeks ago, is a reward for things that we went through. So, you know, you, you, you hear about and different things that people get mad. They're like, well, when God and how and if and, you know, are, are, are people right in what they're saying? And, and it's just been one battle after another. How many of you feel like that since about February of 2020? It's like one battle after another. Yeah. So my question has been to God, God, what's, what's the reward of this? Okay. You know, he, he would tell David, you know, at one point he, he gave David rest from his enemies, Brenda. Yes, he did. And another point he told David, go in and you're going to win the battle, but you're going to take spoil. My thought is, God, we've gone through a lot as a nation. Somewhere there has to be some rewards of what we've been through. Is that fair enough to say? Yes, yes. And so absolutely. God begins to say it, and one of the things that he, he speaks about is March 28th of 2021. He talks about how there's coming new currency. He says your dollar bills will look different. Your coins, new, as new arises, a new look of your currency, your bank accounts shall look new. Your laws shall not be as though they sign not be as though they've signed in your executive orders. And so God's beginning to talk about how this new face of your currency is going to begin to happen. That's part of your spoils of war. God's going to do something even in the finances, the economy, the currency of the nation to bless the people for the harshness of what you've had, the political uh, manipulation that's been involved, in the fighting. God's saying one of the ways I'm going to bring spoil is I'm going to show you through revaluing of currency and your currency and how I'm going to raise up your economy. Now, Amen. April 18th, listen to this. There, there was something that happened. So I came out in the 9 o'clock service. We always like to do a greeting to, to greet the people. And something happened. I got out on the stage, and I went into a vision immediately, and I began to see a lion that was pacing back and forth. And it was really strange. And I knew it was, a, it was figurative of the Lord, that that was kind of his position. And so, you know, we often say, how many have ever heard, those of you that are watching and listening by the phone and, and here tonight, have ever heard, let the lion roar? But this time, God said, let the lion pounce. And this is the moment, says the Spirit of God, that the Lion of Judah has waited for this season of your spring, summer, and fall to begin to pounce upon that which has thought that it could steal, kill, and destroy not only the people of God, but a nation. But God says, do you understand that hell is afraid and is shaking at this moment? And so there shall be that which hell shall try to do to have a last stand, to bring intimidation, confusion, fear. There shall be, God says, China will raise up its voice, flex their shoulders, and shall breathe fire to this nation to intimidate, even upon the area of Taiwan. But do not be afraid, as it looks as though this nation is going backwards. Even as hailstones will fall, and tornadic activity seem to increase. This is not my judgment, nor is it the work of my hands. <coughs> The watchman must arise at this time, says the Spirit of God. Pray for your territory. Pray for your region. Pray for states of this nation as the enemy seeks to bring what shall be great fury and intimidation because he knows that the Lord of the heavens laughs. For there is great spoil. I have promised that I will speak to you at this time. Great spoil shall be given back to this nation as great changes shall be brought before your eyes. That's part of the spoil. And those who have led in the past season, some have been removed, some shall be removed, others shall be brought to a place of justice. As new faces shall arise in your land, and I'll give back to your house that you call the White House. God says it shall be a lighthouse, it shall be new. Do not hold on to the expectation of what used to be. For there's a new expression that shall come forth out of your lighthouse. And there shall be a new Supreme Court. There will be a new Congress and Senate, Senate because of the spoils of war. And God says, even, let me speak to you. You're at war against the ancient forces that desire to steal your nation. You're at war with the red dragon and those who have cooperated, says the Lord. And I will give your spoil back, says, I will give spoil to you. And God says, the spoil shall include currency. It shall include wealth. It shall include a revaluating of currency. That there will be those who immediately empowered with wealth to finance this great harvest. Are you ready for this new? Are you ready for changes? Are you ready for the spoils of what you thought this nation was going backwards? You thought that I gave it into the hands of the enemy because the people did not pray. They have prayed. 
And they fasted, they've list, and I've listened, and now I am answering. And I will reward you, says the Lord, but it will not come without my vengeance against the enemy. So prepare yourself, your children, the schools, the university, the courts, the government, the internet, even the medical, for they've tried to force upon you mandatory things. But God says it's because hell shakes that that which they say mandatory shall become a liberty that shall begin to touch the medical industry of this nation. And there'll be other things that have already been discovered that will eradicate sickness of the past to make way for future healings and future diseases that they said would take you out. It will not exist in the new. Do, do you understand what's coming? For these are spoils of this battle, of this day, a new era upon you, says the living God. Prepare. I'm about to pounce, says the Lion of Judah. Hallelujah. Thank I think you, we man. need to end it with that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's just awesome. Amen. All right. Praise, Praise the God. Lord. Well, right now, let's just lift our hands up to thank heaven. You, First of all, Father, we thank you for the prophetic word. We thank you for the prophetic anointing. We align ourselves in agreement with what heaven is doing. We align ourselves in agreement with the Father, the Father's yes. purposes, the Father's plan. Lord, we align ourselves in agreement and we Thank stand you, as people of faith you, who believe that what you are doing, that what God is doing shall be great in this season and in this time and nothing the enemy has purposed, nothing the enemy has planned, shall be able to interrupt or disrupt this global awakening, yes. this last great harvest, nothing that the enemy shall try. We declare the work of witchcraft is broken. Thank we declare Lord. that it shall not succeed, that their rituals, their hexes, all of their spells are just empty repetition that has no power. And we just Thank say that the hosts have gone forth to bring forth the great Thank harvest. You, the hosts have gone forth to bring forth the purposes of God. And Lord, we just say tonight, we declare tonight that we are in agreement with your plan and we believe that righteousness shall stand in this land, you, that you are not done with the United States of America, that this nation shall continue to be a beacon of light you, and the church shall be liberated you, and shall be free to do Thank its you, purpose. Father, raise up your remnant, we pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, if you're listening tonight and you need healing in Thank your you, body yeah, in on, some man. area, right now in the name of Jesus, Hank and I and this congregation in the studio tonight, we prophesy to you. We speak healing. We speak over you in the name right. of Jesus. Yes. You get off the people of God. We speak healing to your body. We speak health to your lungs. We speak life to your organs. We say strength. You return in the people of God right now. And we say in the authority of Jesus of Nazareth and in the power of his name that COVID upon your life and upon your loved ones. It is broken right now. I say you get out of their body. Right. You get out of their household. Right. Out of their you families. get out of their, their families. In the yes. name of Jesus, yes. we say you have no power because the Lord God of hosts shreds your works in the name of Jesus. Come on, I believe we need to shout against that in the authority of Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Now, whatever you need here, Healing Thank you, for Thank you, Lord. you just receive your healing. Thank you, receive Lord. your healing over your organs. Come on, receive Come it on. over your brain. Receive healing over your lymph nodes, over your throat. I speak healing to throats. I speak healing over asthma. We prophesy yes, healing yes. and health over, over digestive lungs. systems, you, over your blood Lord. pressure. You. We yes. speak right now in the name of Jesus. Backs, you be healed. Legs, Thank you Lord. be healed. Arthritis, you get out of God's That's people right. right now, I break the power of arthritis against every Thank joint, yes. every ligament in your hands, your feet, your knees, your hips. I break Lord. the power of that in the name of Jesus. We prophesy new life. We prophesy Thank vigor. Yes. We prophesy new strength. Thank we you, say that your body and the cells of your body, every cell, every fiber, every organ, your yes. bones, your Thank blood, you, your immune system, we speak health.
health. We speak strength. Right now in the name of Jesus, we break the power of every negative word, yes. every negative report, yes. anything that has been prognosticated, spoken, declared, or set upon you that is contrary yes. to the promises of God, contrary to healing. Right now in Jesus' name, we shred that report and we say the report of the Lord stands, the promise of yes. God for healing you, stands in the name of Jesus of Nazareth and we say help, we say life, we say strength in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. yes, thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Father, we also speak where there has been weariness, where there has been fatigue, where yes. there has been tiredness within the people, Lord, where there has been a weight even upon their shoulders and that which has tried to steal their faith to bring them even into fear and anxiety, even yes. depression. We break the power yes. of every satanic curse, every satanic assignment. We rebuke it in the name of Yeshua. And we say whatever is bound upon earth shall be bound in the heavens. We bind every assignment against you in the name of Jesus. And whatever is loosed upon earth shall be loosed out of the heavens. We lose strength. Jesus in your physical name. body, strength into your soul, strength in your yes, spirit, yes. where you rise up with power and might in your spirit. Yes, we yes, speak Lord. over you boldness to yes. stand in a place hey. that you will not be afraid. Yes. You will not be depressed. You will not be given into anxiety. We speak and declare that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. We release an anointing upon you now that breaks every yoke, undoes every heavy burden. We yes. release the anointing over your eyes that you will have visions and dreams, that you will see the things that Come God on, is doing yes. and he yes. has been yes. saying yes. and it will be a confirmation it'll bear witness for you will say I have seen it God has showed it to me Lord put a knowing and a peace on the inside yes. of their spirit that no fear no anxiety no words of men could steal it and I pray for an overshadowing as it was on the womb of, 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 of the blessed Mary who carried the, the very seed of Christ within her. Oh God, it says that the spirit of the Lord overshadowed her womb. I pray for an overshadowing of thy spirit upon every person in the sound of yes. my voice. I pray an overshadowing of the Holy Spirit over this nation. Oh God, even over 45, over your plan, yes. over Arizona, yes. over the audit, Lord, even other states that yes, we prophesy Lord. and declare. Let them follow suit that every evil deed, every fraudulent act, every treasonous act will be exposed. Let the Spirit of God yes, be Lord, released. Yes, Lord, and Holy yes, Spirit, Lord. as you hovered over the face of the deep, hover over that audit in Arizona. Protect it. Keep man's hands off of it. Keep every devil off of it. Yes, and let yes. truth prevail. Let the Holy Spirit of truth prevail in the land of the free and the home of the brave. We call this nation back into divine order. We call 45 into his place. We call this nation into divine alignment, into divine timing. Not of our might, not of our power, but by your spirit. We prophesy and speak. United States, you are blessed. You are not going backwards. We speak to every executive order and we say you shall be overturned. That steals the rights and the freedoms of the people. We break perversion. Yes. And every evil agenda that tries to harm our children. God, let them be stopped. Let them be exposed. Drive it from our land. Hold God accountable. Those who have had their hands that have, that have been yes, part Lord. of diabolical Lord, deeds. Lord, Lord, dark things, yes. evil things. Hold them accountable. And Father, we Lord, pray, Lord, put Lord, a Lord, silence Lord. upon the voice of those that men say is Lord, truth Lord. in our yes, media. Yes, expose Lord. them. Yes. Father, expose them. Silence them. And raise up the new that you have promised. Yes, new God. networks arise. New Lord, voices. Lord, Father, let Jesus. people begin to walk away. Even yes. from their job saying, we will not report this anymore. Yes. We will not yes, say it Lord. anymore. Yes, God, Lord. we pray for your shaking. <laughs> that after everything is shaken, Lord, your divine order and your divine plan shall stand in the land. Yes. We thank you now when we prophesy acceleration yes. upon this nation yes. over your plan. Yes, yes, Father, yes, let Lord. people not grow weary. That's let right, them not Lord. say out of their mouth, the days are prolonged. No! You shall fulfill, God, what you have promised and what you have planned. Yes, in the name of and Jesus. so it shall be. 
God of and right in now the in the name of, of Jesus we speak you, to Lord. every you, evil Lord. spirit you, of darkness thank this you, onslaught thank you, this plot this scheme that has come against Lord. our men and women of law enforcement we break your power right now in the authority of the name of Jesus of Nazareth that which has come to lie and twist and steal in Jesus name we say that evil spirit of lawlessness in Jesus name let it be broken right now and heavenly father we ask that you would commission hosts against our men and our women of all races that wear the badge we ask you holy spirit that your angels would be released to protect them protect them on the streets protect them in the courts protect them in the media right now we say Lord Jesus we pray and we cry out that you would uplift their discouraged hearts that you would uplift their discouraged spirits that they would not find reasons to unnecessarily resign but I pray God that there would be a movement that would be brought forth that would bring back support respect and honor for law and order in this nation in the name of Jesus. And we pray a supernatural protection over them as well. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, expose every lie that the enemy has tried to do in false narratives. We pray we are in the season of great removals. Lord, let it happen. Yes, Lord. Protect those who are speaking out. Yes. Not only with the blood of Yeshua, yes, but also Lord. with the hosts, that they will stand protected in this land Jesus and in this nation name. too. And in their Jesus children, name. their spouses, their properties. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. And I just yes, saw Lord. something. I just saw, I just saw a dude. Real quick. Listen, we're here to minister to you. I know that we're going maybe a little long, but Brent and I, we love God and That's we love right. people. We love you. So if you want to stay on, you can stay on. If you got other stuff to do, you can go. But we just, I want to minister to people for a minute. But you just, you, you, I just see a dude. You, you, you have your, your feet crossed and it's on like, a, uh, what do you call those things, Brandon? You put your feet up. Ottoman. Ottoman. Look at the thing and your slippers just fell off. And you're just getting ready to, to go and pick up your slippers. And the Lord says, just leave the slippers lie on the floor. Don't pick them up because there's a new covering for your feet a new plan for your path and the direction that I shall carry you and will bring you. And the Lord said there is coming. Yes, changes in your occupation and even what you currently do. You've been concerned even with your current path that you've been on and your job, your occupation. And God says even as that slip, you're going to see in the the days that are ahead that you're going to have a new covering, a new season, a new direction, even by way of occupation and the paths of your feet. Yes, and so Lord. the Lord just says, just even you as you move Jesus. your feet, I just declare divine timing, divine placement, divine promotion, and divine alignment. In Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Thank, Lord. You, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now we're going to do Amen. something. In a few minutes, we're, we're going to get ready to receive. It's our midweek service. This is our Lord. Wednesday night, so we're going to receive our offering. And I want to encourage everybody to join us online. And I feel like led tonight, one thing we didn't pray about is financial provision. And I want to get in agreement with that prophetic word that the, about the spoils of war. And, and Sunil, I want to make sure that is on our website, that people can go out and get that prophetic word and war and with that. You can go to the Brenda. Prophetic Perspectives page at Hank and Brenda. But I want to pray tonight for financial breakthroughs and provisions. You might have a need. Maybe you need a new car. Anybody believing for a new vehicle? If you're believing, let's believe for that. All right, let's pray about that. If you're online, let's pray about that. Listen, even if you have all the money to go buy and pay cash for the car, you don't want to buy a lemon. You want God to be involved, right? So that's what I want. I want God to be. I want to buy the right one. I've been led by the Spirit. Amen? So uh, we're going to get our offerings ready. They'll put the giving information right up there on the screen so you can go ahead or you can pull out. Those of you ushers, you can begin to pass out envelopes. This is our normal Wednesday service. We receive an offering always on Wednesday night. Um, and Or you can whip out your phone. 
uh, church family and you can <laughs> jump in there on the app as well or the text give information is up there on the screen. And by the way, as I always say, construction is coming along beautifully and uh, Pastor Doug and Mike Orff, they are doing a wonderful job keeping stuff in order and um, you're going to see some new concrete coming this year, some new paving out front and I think we're working on replacing some of the junky sidewalks that have been here for 40 years so it's going to be looking awesome and it's all part of God's plan listen if we're in a new era I believe that's this is just part of that it's just the God showing himself amen so you can go ahead and get those out um, and then as you um, fill out your envelope we're going to stand tonight and I want to pray Hank for the spoils of war to come to God's people. And I don't know, I feel specifically to pray for vehicles, but just get in on it. See, I have learned with the Lord that God could be speaking something, maybe God's speaking healing over arthritis and you don't have arthritis, maybe it's something else that you're battling. Well, you just take the healing anointing for whatever it is you have and you just take hold of it. Don't think, oh, well, God didn't call out my condition, so that means I didn't get anything. No, 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 no. Healing, the Bible says in Luke, the fifth chapter, that when the, they crowded in on Jesus, the doctors of the law, to ask him questions, says the power of the Lord, you can read it, Luke 5, 17, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Okay? Now, one guy got healed of a paralysis. But if they would have all jumped in on it, see, they didn't jump in on it. If they would have jumped in on that promise, they could have taken that. And obviously, if the power of the Lord was present to heal them, those doctors of the law and Pharisees must have had some conditions. So you just take, if you have a financial need tonight, I just want you to take it. When we make this declaration as we give, you just take that out of the atmosphere that God will provide you the right vehicle. You'll never get the wrong house or the wrong apartment with goofy neighbors. Come on, we pray over that. You know, I mean, you can have the best apartment with the worst neighbors and it'll make you want to move. Truthfully, I mean, we speak over that. I've seen neighbors come and go in all of our 32 years of marriage because we prophesy. We prophesy. When, when a house goes up for sale in our neighborhood, we speak to it right away. So just believe God. Whatever it is that you need, that God will always lead you the right way. He'll always provide for it. It'll always be a blessing in your life, right? Amen. All right, are you ready to give? All right, let's stand up and do this tonight. Father, I thank you. For every person as they get ready to give and those that are joining on the internet through the app yes. or the website, you, Lord, Lord, I just thank you that you are the God of provision. Jesus, you said from your own words that we would never have to worry about tomorrow, that we wouldn't have to worry about how provision is yes, going to come to us. So, Lord, we just stand upon that. As we give tonight, we just stand upon that. We're laying up for ourselves treasures you, in heaven tonight. And so we thank you as we do that, that we'll not have to worry about our bills, that we don't have to worry about where we're going to live, what we're going to eat, how, what car we're going to drive, or whether we can put gas in it or repair the car we have. And we don't have to live and worry about those things. We don't have to worry about medical expenses. You take care of everything that we have need of. And Lord, if you took care of Jesus, you said it. If you took care of the sparrows, you'll take care of Thank your you people. Lord. Yes. God so I just want you to hold your offering Thank or your you phone up real high. <laughs> if you're giving tonight, and those of you online, just stretch your hand toward the computer screen. And right now, let's just prophesy this. Say, Lord, I thank you, I thank you. Thank that you, you promised provision everything i have need of everything that i have you will of. take care of it you will take and lord i am confident, I am confident in, the promises in the promises of your word of your word. i will not speak I will not like speak a person like a person who is worried, who is worried about, provision. about provision i don't talk about that I speak provision. I speak, I speak more than enough. I, speak more I than declare enough. abundance. Because, Lord, that's what, you promised. that's what you promised. Now, let me pray this. Father, anybody needing a vehicle tonight? They need a new car? I just pray right now, those online, those in this room, everybody listening, right now, we just say, Lord, you lead them to the right yes. place, yes. to the right car, at the right time, and this will be the best vehicle. That's our declaration. 
that this will be the best vehicle they have yeah. ever Thank owned in their lifetime. We speak it, we declare it, and we say it's true. Hosts, lead the people. Direct and guide, set the car on the lot in the right place, and they will walk in and know exactly, exactly that that's the one they're to buy with confidence, and we declare it. Nothing from the devil can interrupt it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, are you ready to give? Ushers, you can serve the people. And uh, do you have any closing no, remarks? No, just come on Sunday, and those of you, make sure you tune in on Sunday. We're going to continue to talk about And then Flashpoint next week. Make sure you tune in. By the way, and if you're not on the mail list, those of you still watching, if you're still connected, make sure you go to hankandbrenda.org. Get all the updates, everything that we're doing, and know that our team is praying for you, and we love you very much. God bless Amen. you. Amen. All right. All right. Hug somebody as you go.